Guys, this is Lord Shale speaking on behalf of our show sponsor, Established Titles. Established Titles is a project based on a Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies. They allow you to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land so you can officially call yourself a lord or a lady. Established Titles is not just about your ego. You also get to do some good. In addition to your new fancy title, Established Title supports global charities like One Tree Planet and Trees for the Future to help with the afforestation effort. Your title pack gets you at least one square foot of dedicated land in a private estate in Scotland. Your certificate features a unique plot number where you can see the exact location of your land. And right now, Established Titles is holding 200 plots of land right next to mine. So come join me in the Bad Guy Inc. Kingdom. Getting this certificate even allows you to officially change your name to Lord or Lady. Put it on your credit card, put it on your plane tickets, or if you're so inclined, put it on your dating profile. Makes for a great last minute gift. And there's even couples packs that come with adjoining plots of land. Established Titles is having a great limited time sale. Go to establishedtitles.com slash chale to save 10% off today. Remember to use the promo code CHAIL or just click on the link below. Remember the name. Blahal Mohammed. Well, yes, Blahal. I believe I will. I believe I will remember that name. Now, this, guys, if you want to understand what Blahal just did, you got to know what it is he walked into. I mean, that changes everything, right? You know tough guys in your hometown. You know tough guys in your school. But it's a very big difference. That tough guy that you know, that guy down at the bar, it's a very big difference to an organized fight. And why? What's different about it? One is a hothead who possibly has some good power and some good strength to build up a little reputation around town. That, that one of them is. But every time he got into a dust up, one thing that wasn't required was courage. There's a big difference. One, and I'm talking about like a street fight. I don't like talking about that stuff, but that's spontaneous. And that's a very big difference from knowing something is coming, waiting. And regardless of how you feel when that moment comes, regardless what emotion you have, if it's anger, if it's fear, if it's happy, if it's sad, regardless of how you feel, you're going to go and do combat anyway. It's very different. It's a massive separation. Well, Hall Mohammed, I lay that out for you because it's important to know what Hall was walking into. This is a three-time main eventer. This is the guy who got more bounce in the last 18 months than any athlete on the rest uh, roster. That includes Ty Tuivasa, who's a massive star. This is the guy that stopped the win streak of now world champion Leon Edwards and begged to do it. This is the guy. When they came out and said, nobody wants to fight Jemayev, this is the guy that we can all now call nobody because he said, I'll do it, and he wasn't joking. Lahal Mohammed has done everything you need to do. He has checked every box. All of a sudden, he finds out he has to fight an undefeated Sean Brady. Sean's idea. Sean did the right thing. Sean's got all these wins. He's got this beautiful record. He, he wasn't quite given a spotlight, so he came after Blahal. Now, that's the last thing that Blahal wanted to do. While Blahal is saying, I will fight anybody, what he means is, I will fight that upper echelon that other people don't want to. I am willing to do it. What am I going to get for that, which I haven't discussed, but it's a built-in byproduct. Is I'm going to get attention and notoriety myself. I'm going to get to move up the rankings, and I'm going to get closer to my world title fight. That part, you don't speak about. That's just a byproduct of being willing to do the heavy lifting. Whether it's a main event, so you got to do it for five rounds. Whether it's co-main event, where it's against Covington. Whether it's against Chamay. I mean, really hard matches. This is what Blahal has volunteered for. All of a sudden, he gets called out from nowhere from Brady. He's got to go do it. Now, Blahal, while saying, I'll do anything, the I do anything generally, whether you say it or not, it means that's up here. That's what you mean when you say you don't generally have to go off the main card, and against a guy with a beautiful, perfect record who people just aren't familiar with. You generally don't have to do that. And when you're called, and when you're asked to do it, here is the test. If you want us, the community, to get behind you when you want something, then you have to show us that you will go do something when you don't want to do it. This is what Bahal Muhammad was up against. Now, you guys may not know that. 
And you may even think, how do I know it? Well, Lahal told us all. As a matter of fact, he didn't tell us all. He showed us all. When you see a guy's reaction after a fight, that's when you know what he was up against going into it. Lahal knew I had been moved for main event. He knew that. He knew there's a lot of eyes on me. He also knew that Sean Brady did to him what he's done to everybody else, which is to call him out publicly. Shoot, I got to respond. Oh, and by the way, this guy's never lost. So Blahal gets to go down. He's gonna, he gets to get as many DVDs as he can of Sean Brady's career. As many of those 15 fights as he can possibly find, he gets to go watch them all, and all he gets to see is his soon-to-be opponent winning. So now Blahal's going to beat him. Where's he going to beat him at? Blahal likes to take people down. Why would you take down a guy that's winning all of his fights off of his back like Sean Brady? Why would you shoot in on a guy who's got this guillotine, particularly a topsider one? I mean, why, why are you going to give him those positions? Okay, great. Well, if I don't do it, how am I going to beat him? I guess I got to go strike with him. I guess I got to cut the ring off. I guess I've got to pressure him, right? There's answers. There's options you can go to. Blahal chose them all. Blahal did all of those things. He did cut him off. He did pressure him. He did throw more punches at him. He did outstrike him. He did take him down. He did avoid those guillotines. Blahal did it all. It was awesome. It really was an incredible performance. But see, we have a job here, guys. Some of you support Blahal and, and you respect everything I just said. Some of you are going to come from the opposite side. That's okay. You're a fan. You're not wrong. You don't have to like him. I, I, I have no problem with it, but we still have an obligation, right? There's still an integrity, even with our cheers or within our booze. There's still an integrity when it's done that we acknowledge something. We have to acknowledge. What a great job Lahal had. We have to acknowledge not only physically did he look good, he wasn't just physically tested, he had a mental battle. That's what you saw in that celebration. Lahal celebrated tonight with more of a sincere joy than he ever has in his career. The reason for that was the fear and the panic of what happens if this doesn't go my way. Where does it send me? That was very real too. That's what he was up against. Now we got to do something for Lahal. What is that going to be? I don't believe we're going to draw him right into a world title fight. It looks as though that's pretty obvious with Kamara Usman. I don't even know that we're going to get him a backup for that fight because I don't think that he wants to wait to quarter two of 2023. I don't think. I think we got to get him busy. You know what I think the answer is, guys? My own, my own opinion. I like the idea of Rachmanov. Now, I feel, skill-wise, that Rachmanov and Chemaev are very interchangeable. If you're fighting Shemaev, you're fighting Rachmanov. If you're ready to fight Rachmanov, you're ready to fight Shemaev. I feel like you've prepared for the same guy. And while I sat down here today to attempt to push a fight and try to elevate Lahal, I think that Rachmanov would then get you the attention and then get you out there. As I sat down today to do that, I then realized Shemaev himself doesn't have a partner. For reasons unknown, it's not even on the board to put Chemayev with Rachmanov. I realize that's the fight we all want to see. It's not even being discussed. So now I want to ask you guys. I think you like the idea of Rachmanov. I think you do. But I think you might like the idea of Chemayev even more. And I think you do agree with me. That something big needs to come from Bahal. Now something big doesn't just mean something hard. I believe with Chemayev, I believe with Rachmanov, you would be in a feature spot. I also believe that you would have the number one contendership on the line. That's what I believe. I want to know if you guys agree with me.